Hi there, welcome to my channel. I'm glad you're here and I hope you get a chance to check out many more of my videos. If you like what you see, please make sure to subscribe below and also give me a thumbs up. Uh, if you have questions about any of the math that's on the videos, uh, please leave those in the comments as well and I will get back to you. Believe it or not, I will send you a note. But I really, really do want to help students understand the math and this is also a great way for teachers if you need a lesson plan, especially when you are out for some reason, um, you can use these videos for that. So again, leave comments, subscribe, thumbs up if you like it. Please don't give me a thumbs down. But anyway, I hope I help out. Take care and go Seahawks. See you later. Welcome to lesson 1.0. Uh, 2.2. This is a great lesson for those people who have been absent or teachers who need it for a sub plan. The thing that's different than most of the time, you won't see me stopping at each question. You will see me using this as an overarching um, concept lesson with the help of the questions in the textbook. So we'll just dig right in and start explaining all of the things that we're going to be working on. Okay, so we're gonna start out with a function investigation, and there are a lot of types of functions out there that you will be working with. This is specifically the inverse function. What does it mean to describe a function completely? In this lesson, you're going to graph and investigate a family of functions with the equations of the form f of x equals one over x minus h. But before we get into this specific uh, function and all of the different things we're gonna work with today, I wanna introduce you to the parent function for this. And here's a graph of the parent function. And it's the parent function because it's the original without any vertical or horizontal translation. This particular one we're going to be working with later is a horizontal translation and I'll show you that later. But then also here is a table. So that's the parent function. Here's a table with some of the values. You'll see that this is negative one half, a negative one and, and then a one half down here as well because I like to look at fractions when I'm graphing. So if I go to negative two and I plot negative one half, you've got a point there, negative one, negative one. And then if I go to one, it's at one, and then two, it's at one half, okay? And if I wanted to, I could go to four, which would equal one fourth, and I don't have that on the table, but if I also put a negative four, uh, you would see negative four down to a negative one fourth. So you've got points that could go all the way through. Um, if I said negative one half, that would take us to a negative two. And the same thing if I went with a positive one half, it would take us up to a positive two. So you get an idea. It's never going to hit zero. Zero, this vertical line is an asymptote. Because if you look at the table, x at zero is undefined because it would give us a denominator of one over zero and that is not a real solution. That is not a real number, it's undefined. Okay, so let's move on. Okay, we are starting here, we're taking and we're combining 178 and 179. Like I said at the beginning, we're gonna do an overarching uh, lesson on this. We won't be focusing specifically on whether it meets 178 or 179. I want you to kind of learn this as a whole it's just a little easier and we can talk more about it rather than specifically addressing each problem. Some of the things will be addressed within each problem, but let's start with this one. Make an XY table of integer values or X values from five less than your value you've chosen and five more. And so we chose the value of seven, H, H equals seven. And so our table will begin at two and end at 12. What do you notice about all of your Y values? Well, let's take a look at our table. Okay. If you look here, all these are all our integer values from two to 12. If you look at here, they're all in fraction form except for the negative one and one. And then we have something here we'll talk about in just a second. So let me go ahead and get rid of that for a moment. Okay, so I also like when I'm graphing to put points negative one fifth, negative one fourth, I just like graphing with uh, fractions in my head rather than decimals if I can help it. And then down here, and if you notice, they kind of mirror each other except for one side is negative. Oops, yes, that's correct. And one side is positive. Okay. 
you see all those little fractions. Are there any values that the that have no y value for the function? Yes. And the reason for that is that's at 7. So if I go f of 7 and we plug it into the equation 1 over 7 minus 7, that is undefined because it becomes 1 over 0. We cannot divide by 0, so the answer is undefined. If you put this in the calculator, in a Texas Instrument calculator in particular, you would see an error message for that one. Okay, so now let's take a look at the graph that goes with this. Okay, you will see that I have plotted all of the points that are in the table on this graph. You will also see that I have a green vertical line here, which is x equals 7. That is our asymptote. Because it, the x values will get infinitesimally closer and closer and closer and closer to 7, to x equals 7, but it will never hit. Now, on your graphing calculator, often it looks like it is hitting, but if you actually zoom in on the tables, you will find out that they're not, it's not actually touching 7. Uh, we'll talk about that a little bit more closely in a moment. We also know that this whole graph is graphed because we are at the line of symmetry for this one is at x equals 7, also at y equals 0, because that's another asymptote if you look at this purple line. That is also an asymptote itself, but we'll talk, we're talking more about the x value at this point. Okay, let's move on. So what I like to do here is I like to see what's happening to the behavior of y around the asymptote as x values get closer and closer to the the one where it's undefined, as you can see right here, we have this undefined. So I'm looking and I'm getting really close to seven from the left. So you see, I go from 6.9 to 6.999. And then from the right, and when I say that, I'm talking about like a number line or from the graph. And then from the right, as I get closer to seven, what's happening to my Y value? Well, as I get closer to seven from the left, my Y value is heading towards negative infinity. As I get closer to 7 from the right, my y value is heading towards positive infinity. We call this infinite discontinuity. That means there's a break in the graph. So we have a break. All right. Kind of important. It's a, an important concept to understand. And I can help a little bit more by bringing in the graph. So we'll bring that in right now. And I just want you to know, if I put in a 6.9999, I would be putting in a negative 10,000. If I put in a 7.0001, I would have a positive 10,000. So you're getting the idea as we get closer our y values get, you know, the absolute value of our y values get significantly huge. So this graph will help you also. You've got x equals 7 here, and that's our asymptote. You will see that my scale, I have 6.9 here, and then on my x value on the right, I have 7.1. Okay, so my scale is a tenth, just one tenth. But you'll see my points are plotted here, here, here here, here, and here that I put in the graph, okay? And then my scale on the Y is, this is like 100. Oops, I don't need that last one. Let's get rid of that. Okay, this is my 1,000, and this is my negative 1,000. Okay, you get an idea. As I get closer and closer to X equals seven line, which is an asymptote, and which is undefined, um, set, the table is undefined at 7, then I'm getting closer and closer to negative and positive infinity on each side. Again, that's infinite discontinuity. It means it's a, a break in the graph. It's not like a line. A linear equation is continuous. There are no breaks in the line. So that helps, and let's get moving on. Okay, so I'm going to bring in the table and the graph for f of x equals 1 over x minus 2. What I have done is I've chosen 5 on either side of 2, as you can see here. Okay, so I'm going from negative 3 to 7. I've got my graph, which I think is really interesting. We're going to talk about that more. Again, it's like negative 1 fifth, negative 1 fourth. The difference here is, if you take a look, where's my asymptote? My asymptote is actually at 
x equals 2, undefined, okay? And then I still, again, have a vertical uh, or an asymptote, a horizontal asymptote at 0. But we're just here focusing more on what's happening to x and the y behaviors. Okay, now all the points are plotted there. And what I want to do is bring in a previous graph, our 1 over x minus 7, because I want to use see some pool similarities. Okay, we chose, again, 5 on either side. So we went from 2 to 12. But look at the values. Our y values, because we chose 5 on either side of our x value, the y values are the same. It's just a different pattern. So it's a pattern we're kind of seeing. Although we were undefined at 7 here and we're undefined at 2 here, I think it's kind of interesting to see what happens to the graph. It's the y values are exactly the same. It goes up the same um, difference each time. So anyway, so that is pretty much it for this one. I just wanted you to see that and be able to compare it with the values that you have on other problems. So let's move on. Okay, so on this slide, I want to look further at 1 over x minus 2 and do exactly what we did when we got close to the 7 values. So you can see here again, as I'm coming from the left, I'm going from, from positive or negative infinity, even though we're not even close to negative infinity. As I get closer and closer to 2, what's happening to my y value? The same thing as our initial value that we came up with, with 1 over x minus 7 it's going towards negative infinity. As I get closer and closer to two, again, x equals two, which is asymptote and undefined, what's happening on my um, y value here? It's going towards positive infinity. So again, we have infinite discontinuity, a break in the graph, okay? So let's take a look at the table that goes with that very similar only i'm at 2.1 here and 1.9 here but the graph has the same behavior it has the same points you can always rewind and look at where i've plotted them for some reason we can't see that one very well but it is there and that kind of tells you it's again infinite discontinuity with this inverse function the other thing i want you to notice is and um on 1 minus 7, it, uh, 1 over x minus 7, it did the same thing. Our translation is horizontal. So if you look here, it's like x minus h, but we put in a positive 2. We are going 2 from the y-axis. So it's the same thing with x minus 7. Our asymptote was at x equals 7. So we had a horizontal translation of 7 on that one. We have a horizontal translation of 2 on this. If it was 1 over x minus 3, we would have a horizontal translation to the right of 3. So you're kind of getting a pattern that goes with that. And let's move on. All right, so this is where we do our summary statements for the function we investigated. And we did specifically the parent function of an inverse function, f of x equals 1 over x. So let's bring in our justification number 1 with the graph and the domain values. You will see here that we have our parent function in g of x, and you'll see that we have asymptotes at y equals 0 and x equals 0. Both of them are asymptotes, and our graph will never touch them. You also see that we have our domain restrictions, so to speak, because x cannot equal 0 and y cannot equal 0. And those are important um, distinctions with this. Otherwise, it can be all real numbers except for uh, zero on both. And if I was doing that in interval notation, I would write that as negative infinity to zero, union, zero to positive infinity. And if you are interested in learning more about this, I can tell you later. But what happens here for both is um, when I say negative infinity to zero with parentheses, it means because of the parentheses, it never hits those points. If it was to include zero, it would be written as negative infinity to zero with a bracket, but it does not include that. So both of these statements, you will never get to negative infinity or zero or zero or positive infinity on either of these. Now CPM will focus more on this, but I just want you to know that sometimes in math textbooks, you will be reading this and it's always good to learn a little bit more. So. That is a side thing, and if you have questions about interval notation, I will write interval 
you can always send me a note in the comments and I would be happy to help you with that. All right, here's justification number two. It is a table and you will see in this table we have it's undefined at zero and that's where the asymptote is. So there's our second justification. We can do it by looking at the tables. Now let's look at it by doing the equation. So it makes sense if you plug zero into the x value, the function is undefined at that point. And you will see that from this particular equation that I've done here. So f of x equals one over zero, and it is undefined at that point. And that pretty much summarizes our inverse function. If you have any questions, go ahead and leave them in the comment section of the video, and I will get back to you and help you out. And I will see you on the next video.